Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to one more Krishna International Magazine show. I am your host, Krishna Offer Varela. Tonight's show is the power of unique kids. And I have the pleasure to have here as my guest, Dr. Aileen Costello. Hi, Dr. Costello, how are you today? Thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me, I'm delighted. So Dr. Costello, she's the chief of ambulatory pediatrics at Boston Medical Center. She's the clinical professor of pediatrics at Boston University School of Medicine. And she's the director of pediatrics primary care clinical and medical director of the So Far program. That is a program that's supporting our families through addition and recovery for children of mothers with a substance use disorder. Dr. Costello is a pediatrician practicing for over 30 years and has been with the BMC for the last five years. Dr. Costello just released her new, in the month of February, her new, her second edition of her book named Quirky Kids, Understanding and Support Your Child with the Developmental Differences. Thank you so much, Dr. Costello, for being here. So Dr. Costello, can you tell us a story behind the title of the book and what inspired you to write this incredible book? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for having me, Krishna, and, uh, and for you talk about my book, which is the passion project of mine. So this is the second edition of Quirky Kids. And the first edition um, I wrote with my friend and colleague, fellow pediatrician, Dr. Perry Klass, um, we were in practice together in Dorchester many years ago. I was raising a child who was developmentally uh, not typical. And um, we were seeing a lot of kids with developmental, like that were a little bit different than a typical child. And we started, we were learning things from parents that we had not learned in our training as pediatricians. And I thought, hmm, this is really interesting. And so I I liked these kids, I was very drawn to them. And instead of calling them special, or I, we, we coined this term quirky as kind of an affectionate way of saying different, but cool. <laughs> wow, that's true. <laughs> because now we have to actually be careful how to find the, the right names to define them. And that is amazing. That's and right. uh, where, should, uh, where should the parents uh, go when they are worried about uh, their child's development? That's such a great question. And I think it's especially a great question during COVID times when kids are often home with parents and not in daycare or preschool. There are no eyes on them other than their parents' eyes um, to sort of point out that this is developmentally different. But if a parent is concerned that, you know, they see other children that are the same ages of their child and their child is not keeping up with them, either with their motor skills or their speech and language um, or their cognition, their ability to understand and communicate. You know, I usually say there are two first things to do. One is call your pediatrician, make an appointment because that's what we do. We see thousands of kids every year and many of them are the exact same age as your child. So we, mm -hmm. we have a sense of whether this is typical behavior or within the range of normal or maybe something that needs to be attended to. And then the second call is your local early intervention program. Early intervention is a federally funded program that's available to everyone in the United States with a child three or under that has any developmental delay. And so a early intervention will come to you and do an evaluation and uh, assess whether or not your child qualifies for services. And if they do, they're often delivered either in the home or at daycare or preschool. And it might look like speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, but things to sort of bring the child up to where we expect him or her to be. Okay. And a lot of times parents actually go to the doctor Google, which you don't recommend, right? <laughs> yes, a lot of, well, I mean, I think uh, we all do it, right? <laughs> if something crosses our yeah. mind, concerned about it, we Google it. And so, um, and we certainly talked to a lot of parents who became very anxious because they look something up on Google and they think their child has a diagnosis that the child most likely does not. And so, um, so I do, I do warn parents 
just be careful about looking things up because you don't know which the reputable websites are, but we do. Like that's, that's how you can use us as professionals with our training is that we know what the reputable well websites are and we can help you determine whether something is a little bit off and there's some, if there's something we can do to help. Okay. So uh, the child development is a really sensitive topic. So uh, what is the first signs for parents, how they can realize that their kids has any, any problem development? Right. Okay. So Quirky Kids, uh, the book is really about, roughly about kids that are um, on the autism spectrum. And, um, you know, I think when a kid is profoundly autistic, it's very, um, it's not that subtle. But if the kids that are higher functioning, and there are many of them, their, their development early in the game, it might be very subtle. The differences might be very subtle. So for example, we expect a nine month old to respond to their name. So if you were nine mm -hmm. months old and you were sitting across the room and I said, Krishna, I would expect you to turn your head and look at me and make eye contact with me. And so, and then by about 12 months, we expect kids to be pointing with a finger to show you something they're interested in or you know, to try to get your attention and make a little triangle of communication between you, the object of interest and themselves. So those are very subtle things that parents might not notice if their kids are not doing those things, but we notice at those visits when we see kids. Does she respond to her name? Does she point? Does she follow a point if you're pointing? How does she indicate that she wants something from you? How is her language? Does she have a certain number of words at a certain age? Is she putting two words together when she's 18 months old? Those kinds of things that we, are, that we assess in a very easy fashion when we're seeing a family at, with a child in the exam room. Wow, this is fantastic because a lot of time parents think, oh no, she's so she's so young, she probably doesn't doesn't know yet. But right. uh, as a pediatrician, you guys can recognize it right away. So uh, that's why it's so important to them to be in contact with the pediatrician. Right. I mean, it's a wow. big part of what pediatric primary care is all about is screening. So it's it's well child care. It's following their growth and their development making sure their immunizations are up to date, and then actually doing screenings. We, we use screening forms at every visit in primary care to ask very specific questions of parents about their child's development that might not come up in conversation. But when parents mm -hmm. fill out a screening form with these very specific questions, we're able to pick up these subtleties um, uh, at a better rate. Okay, that's great. So are there any genetic tests or ultrasound that uh, can help to predict whether a child has any potential development challenges or how early is too early for the early intervention? <laughs> yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, there are no prenatal tests to determine whether a child is quirky or not. Um, there might mm. there because we don't know yet what the genetic underpinnings of these disorders are. We believe that there's genetics involved, but for the vast majority of kids, there's no prenatal test, no ultrasound, no amniocentesis that's going to tell us, oh, this child's going to have autism. Um, and then your second question about how early is too early for early intervention, like they'll see a newborn. So like if a newborn is born very prematurely, for example, they might need a little extra support with their motor skills or with their feeding and swallowing. And early intervention can address that like right out of the gate as soon as the baby goes home from the hospital. So there's no such thing as too early and the evidence is overwhelming that early intervention helps kids. It helps foster a better developmental outcome. So pediatricians really believe in early intervention um, because we've seen the results. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so what do you recommend for parents with uh, quirky kids? So, uh, is there any aspect from your book that you'd like to highlight it for uh, our viewers? Mm -hmm. I okay. guess um, what I would say to parents is it's kind of fun having quirky kids. It's not what you expected. You know, there's this very famous book um, for new parents called 
what to expect when you're expecting. And I think that quirky mm -hmm. kids is what to expect when it's not what you were expecting, right? When your mm -hmm. child is clearly not exactly what you expected him. Or her. And in some ways, none of our kids are, right? But if you really think your child is different mm -hmm. and their development is not typical or, or quote unquote normal, um, mm -hmm. get, get all the support that you possibly can, right? Get help, talk to your pediatrician, get an evaluation so you know, um, does he have a diagnosis? Can we, can we help? Uh, does he, is he gonna need special education services when he gets to school? Because many of these kids do. But I think the most important message that I wanna give to parents is every child deserves a childhood. They deserve to be kind of home, hanging out with mom while she's cooking, um, going to the park, you know, doing things with their brothers and sisters, um, having joy. Not every single day has to be a therapeutic appointment. You don't have to be going to PT one day, OT the next, social skills training. Mm -hmm. ha, ha, remember, children deserve a childhood and we deserve to, we are obligated to, to give them that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your insights, for your teaching us all this because uh, sometimes things is in front of us and we're super unaware. So right. this is a great source for the family, parents, yeah. everyone that has uh, quirky kids. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. So, uh, thank you. So we're going to take a small break. You are watching Krishna International Magazine show. So we're going to show some slides so you can uh, find a, a better way so you can find where to find this book recommended for Dr. Costello. You are watching Krishna International Magazine show, The Power of Unique Kids. We'll be right back. watching Krishna International Magazine show. Tonight's show is the power of unique kids and I have a pleasure to have here with us Dr. Aileen Costello. So Dr. Costello, clearly you are a woman of many talents. <laughs> Thank you so much. Besides being an author and a pediatrician, could you tell us a little bit about the story about the, the So Far program? Sure. Thanks for asking. It's a it's another passion project of mine. So, so far stands for supporting our families through addiction and recovery. And I think as everybody knows, we have a national crisis um, of opioid addiction in the United States. And Boston is no exception to that. And it is across the board, poor people, rich people, white people, black people, you name it, everyone is at risk for this. Mm -hmm. And I think that I will say as a doctor that I think that my profession contributed to this to some degree. When I was in my training, um, you know, the pharmaceutical companies were really pushing pain control. A patient should never be in any pain. And in fact, I think we've learned over time that like, it's okay to have some pain. It, no, we don't have to be 100% pain free all the time. Um, <laughs> and, and because there were, medicines that were being prescribed at very high rates <clears throat> to keep the whole world absolutely free of pain, we contributed to this epidemic of opioid use. And <clears throat> what I'm interested in is the fact that there are many young adults with opiate use disorder who are of childbearing age and they have kids. And how are those kids? How are they doing? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. You're good, yeah, take your time. <clears throat> So Boston Medical Center has a long legacy of caring for people with substance use disorders and addiction. We have an OBGYN program here for women who 
are either actively using substances or are in recovery and on medications to help them. It's called Project Respect. And they do mm -hmm. very detailed um, pediatric, I'm sorry, uh, obstetrical prenatal care for women to keep the baby as safe as possible and deliver the most healthy possible baby. So far is the pediatric program that then accepts those babies and children um, into our program as a medical home. So we can follow and we now have hundreds of kids from zero to 17, all of whom were exposed to substances before they were born and are growing up in households with parents in recovery. And we are interested in what is the impact for kids? How are they doing developmentally? How do they do when they get to school? Do they have difficulties with feeding, with growing, um, with learning, with attention? And how do we support them? And how do we prevent another generation of um, individuals with substance use disorders? Because in many families, this, this is an issue in the family. I grew up in a family with substance use disorders and there are people in my generation who are struggling with it too. So I know how real it is and I know how important it is to try to get in on the ground level with kids when they're young to help them understand that there are other ways to cope with stress and distress than picking up a substance. Thank you. And actually, thank you for sharing uh, your story there because uh, the better way to empathize and make you an excellent doctor as you are, mm -hmm. this is great. And how you, f how you believe that the pandemic has been influencing those kids and yeah. those quirky kids now? Well, I think the pandemic has had a huge impact on all of us, right? I mean, every single mm -hmm. person in the world has suffered in one way or another. And I think both mm -hmm. of these special populations of kids that, that I have a particular interest in have struggled. So, you know, the quirky kids are out of school, you know, out of their structured environments, which are very important for quirky kids. For they, need, they need whatever services they're getting at school. And their parents need a break because they're challenging, right? Sometimes yes. their behaviors are really difficult. And we have a lot of exhausted stressed out parents because big kids have been home doing remote learning and most quirky kids really struggle with the zoom learning mm -hmm. the so far families i think uh you know the pe pe people with substance use disorders live in a constant state of stress and recovery is kind of a full-time job it requires a lot of mental and physical energy to stay in recovery and it requires a lot of physical and mental energy to raise a child of any age. And so I think the stresses on those parents have been even higher than on the rest of us. And we have seen a lot of lapses and relapses because people are really struggling with their stress. And we're here to support people through those times and help them get back on track. And it's not a crime, it's, it's an expected uh, part of recovery and we're here to help to keep you and your baby close together or your child and um, help you get back on track. Thank you. So uh, I know as a pediatrician, you are considered as a first responder and during the pandemic, uh, which allowed you to, to take both of your COVID vaccines, I'm glad I also took my both of doses of my COVID vaccine. So is there any advice from your perspective on how parents and families can stay healthy during this pandemic? Yes, uh, thank you for asking because of course it's what's on everyone's mind and this has been a very hard year for all of us and Boston Medical Center has seen a disproportionate um, amount of cases of COVID and deaths from COVID. Um, so <clears throat> what I believe is that our only way out of this is to get as many people vaccinated as possible. And you know, now millions of people have been vaccinated around the world, which is very encouraging for people who are anxious about vaccines. And I am aware that there are plenty of people that are anxious about vaccines for a variety of reasons. Uh, there is also a lot of misinformation about the vaccines on social media and the internet. 
Um, and most of those um, sites are kind of like going to Dr. Google. Like you <laughs> might find information that actually is going to make you more anxious rather than support you as a family. But That's I perfect. think, you know, many of our in our community live in multi-generational families and we don't want to be the vector that infects our parents. Um, and so I really believe in it. And BMC has five sites around the city for people to make appointments and get vaccinated. And I really believe it's the right thing for all of us to do. I will say that right now the vaccine is only approved for individuals 16 years of age and over. And we are starting a trial here at Boston Medical Center to study the use of the vaccine in young children. And hopefully, you know, in a matter of months, we will have vaccinated enough kids to, to show that it is safe and effective for children too, but we're not there yet. Okay, so thank you so much. So it's so important to, when is your time to take the vaccine, to you to don't feel hesitate, to consult your primary care provider, all your resource, the CDC website, or more information, Boston Medical Center has a great uh, website too as well that you can get more information about there to reduce your exodus in, in vaccine. Mm -hmm. So please let's all and gather time, take it, is the better way to us all to get back, get back to our normal lives. <laughs> So Dr. Costello, talking about your amazing book, so how the viewers can find it? <laughs> um, well, I think I've seen it in some local bookstores and of course it's on Amazon where so many of us get our books now. You can order it and it's paperback, so it's not hugely expensive. And I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something that helps you help your child. Thank you, thank you for sharing this. And uh, for our viewers knowledge, this book is also available in Spanish and is highly recommended for children, parents, and families with uh, atypical children. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dr. Costello, how also the viewers can get in touch with you? <laughs> um, well, you know, I work here at Boston Medical Center and um, if you have questions, I just have to warn you, I get hundreds of messages every day, so I'm not that quick. Um, if you have specific questions about your child, the best thing to do is reach out to your pediatrician and make sure that you can set up an appointment. And I, I would recommend an in-person appointment so that you, with your child, mm -hmm. so the pediatrician can actually walk in and, uh, you know, start assessing the child even before they start talking. We, do. we walk mm -hmm. in, we get a feeling for a child, and then we try to interact with them. And many... Many pediatric practices around Boston um, participate in the Reach Out and Read program, which is a literacy program for kids in the first five years of life. And often we'll enter the room with a children's book, like an age appropriate children's book, and actually use that book as a tool to assess a child's development. Is the child interested in the book, familiar with the book? Do they know how to look at a picture and then look at you at, or point? Or if you say, where's the apple? Can they point to the apple? Like very simple things like that. And I, I think I would like, I know we're all watching a screen right now, but I would like to point out that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no screen time for children under two, which is a hard, that's a tall order in today's world, especially during the pandemic when parents need a break. But I think it's just an important message for parents to get that our kids are not learning from screens. They're entertained, mm -hmm. they might be quiet, but they're not really learning anything and they're not getting attached to you by watching your cell phone. But if they're on your lap with a book and you're pointing out pictures and they're looking at you and they're hearing your voice and the intonation of your voice and the vocabulary that you're using, that's how they learn. And we have a lot of evidence that reading, simple reading to kids as a daily activity is promotes attachment, promotes literacy, and that kids do better when they get to kindergarten if their parents read to them when they were young. Plus it's Thank fun. You. Yeah. So and American Academy and of Pediatrics, they don't recommend kids to use the, the screen uh, right. on the young age, right? That's so correct. what is the right yeah. age recommended for parents to know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the first two years of life, um, you know, no, no tablets, no cell phones, you know, no computers, no televisions. 
And I know when there's a family with three or four kids and the older ones are doing it, you know the baby's going to be there too. But it's um, but to the degree that you can, within reason, read and talk and sing and count and make eye contact and show them you love them, uh, that's way more important for your child's well-being and connection, emotional connection, than a screen. Okay, Dr. Costello, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Costello, for being here tonight with us and for sharing this successful book, so uh, which has incredible stories, strategies, and uh, solutions to help parents and families with the quirky kids. You highlighted many ways to diagnose, educate, socialize, and manage life at home and in the community. Thanks all the viewers for watching Krishna International Magazine show. I'm so also so grateful for the incredible team of BNN, in particular, the director of the show, Ashley Lewis. Blessings to you all. Let's celebrate what makes us all unique and special, the power of unique kids. Thanks a million, have a lovely night. Thanks so much for watching Krishna International Magazine show. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Dr. Costello. Wow. <laughs>